Does living abroad make you more creative? Apparently the answer is yes, according to a recent study by you, William Maddox. Welcome. Thank you. You're an assistant professor of organizational behavior here at That's INSEAD. Right. And with a couple of colleagues, you've conducted some very interesting uh, research, which has already started to attract media coverage, about the fact that apparently, mm -hmm. according to your scientific findings, if you live abroad for a certain amount of time, mm -hmm. studies show that you're more creative. Could you tell us about what, what the background was there? Uh, sure. So these studies, most of the studies were done in collaboration with Adam Glinsky, who's a professor of management at Northwestern University. Um, we've run several correlational and experimental studies showing that people who've lived abroad seem to be more creative, and the longer people have lived abroad, the more creative they seem to be. How do you measure creativity? I mean, th that's not going to be easy to benchmark in people. Sure. So in the, in the psychology literature, there are a number of standard tasks. So for example, one is called the Dunker Candle task. Um, and in this task, there are three objects on a table. There's a box of tacks, a book of matches, and a candle. And the subject's uh, job is, is to figure out how to affix the, box, or the candle to the wall so that when the candle is lit, wax won't drip on the floor. And you have to only use the candle, the box of tacks, and the book of matches. Dare we give the answer to this simple Absol puzzle? Absolutely. So the creative and also correct solution is to empty the box of tacks tack it to the wall, place the candle inside. When the candle is lit, the wax drips into the box. And the reason it's considered creative is you're using the box of tacks for, for a function for which it's not usually used, which is a, a repository or a candle holder. OK, and so what do the studies show in terms of percentages mm -hmm. according to whether you've lived abroad or not? Right, so not only do we find a positive correlation between how long people have been abroad and the likelihood of solving the problem, but we find that 60% of the people in this particular study who had lived abroad solved the problem correctly but only 42% of people who hadn't lived abroad solved the problem correctly. What about if we take the, the reverse postulate, which is that mm -hmm. people who are creative choose to live abroad? How do you check for that? One of the things is I, I would imagine that this is probably uh, correct as well. I would imagine the causal direction goes in both ways. One of the ways we check for this is to measure personality characteristics, for example, openness to experience, which is a psychological characteristic that encompasses things like risk-taking, adventurousness, which is highly related to creativity. So in some of the studies we've measured these personality characteristics, we can statistically control for these, and we still find an effect of living abroad on creativity over and above these other personality characteristics. And then you did a, another study um, where basically you show that uh, it's not just a question of uh, traveling abroad mm -hmm. for uh, like a week's holiday. I mean, there mm -hmm. is a correlation between how much time you spend abroad. What's going on there? Uh, that's a good question. So actually, one of the interesting things about our findings is we don't find a positive correlation with travel abroad um, and creativity. And I think this is explained by um, a study we actually ran here at INSEAD with some MBA students that found that the more people had adapted while they were abroad, the more creative they were on the Dunker Candle task, uh, which I just described. So it seems to be that short stints abroad or um, depending on your actual behaviors and thoughts, the thought processes that you go through while you're abroad seem to make a big difference. So not only does the time matter, um, which can explain why living abroad matters and, and not traveling abroad, but it's also the, the psychological um, transformation that you might go through while you're abroad. So this would be related to language, in other words, if you lived Absolutely. abroad for a year but only acquired minimal skills with the foreign language or lived abroad for the same amount of time but gotten much better at the language, have you checked for that correlation? or? Mm -hmm. what, what can you say about that? So in general, there's a very strong, robust association between foreign language uh, aptitude and creativity. So bilinguals, trilinguals are more creative um, in general. And I think the adaptation part, the language is part of the adaptation part. So you can imagine a person who goes to live abroad for a year but hangs out most, mostly with expatriates, maybe from their own country. Okay, that person is not going to derive the same kind of creative benefit that someone who tries to adapt themselves to the new culture, learn the language, learn the customs. Um, and really get involved in, in changing who they are and, and, and how they behave. To just draw on an example from my own past, mm -hmm. on our honeymoon we went to Vietnam and had a tour guide who spoke perfect French and he'd never left the country. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's possible that there's a correlation mainly between language without the travel part? In other words, somebody mm -hmm. who had lived in, in the United States but had learned five languages without ever traveling abroad would show mm -hmm. the same kind of creativeness or not? That's a great question. We can't answer with the data that we have, but I would imagine that you can get these kinds of different multicultural experiences within a, cult within a culture, a single culture, and that would have the same kind of facilitative effect on creativity. So for example, um, our colleagues Angela Lung and C.Y. Chu, who are at Singapore Management University and Nanyang Technological University in Singapore, show 
um, they have a scale looking at different kinds of domestic uh, multicultural experiences. So exposure to, dip to foreign musicians, exposure to different food, expo exposure to foreign friends. And they find the more uh, domestic exposure that people have to different cultures, the more creative they are as well. Okay, and now um, you did another study where you showed that uh, the recollection of the adaptation can also spur momentary creativity. How does that work? That's right. So this is a technique called priming, where we ask people to mentally recall and write about the experiences um, of either living abroad or adapting abroad. And what this does is it, sh it, tr it shows um, a causal effect of these, of these mental experiences. So if you, if you recall and write about having lived abroad, um, people who do this show more subsequent creativity within the next five or ten minutes compared to people who recall other experiences, for example, going to the supermarket, being in their hometown. So there seems to be, so this is another way to get out the causal question of does living abroad actually cause people to be more creative? When we reactivate the experiences, it does seem to cause increased creativity. Do you think there are any other factors that can be uh, uh, weeded out? I'm thinking here of uh, age, for example, mm -hmm. according to whether you went abroad at age 10, 20, yep. 50, 60, how does that factor in? We didn't publish this particular finding, but in one study we did find a negative correlation between the age at which people first went abroad and subsequent creativity. So this implies that the younger you go abroad for the first time, the more it's going to impact subsequent um, creativity and this makes sense when you think about neurological research on the brain that the brain is constantly changing itself until about 8 or 10 or 12 years old there's this window um, of opportunity especially with language and so you can imagine that the younger you are the more your brain is changing if you're getting those cultural experiences at a young age it's going to have um, a better a stronger effect on subsequent creativity. How do we tie this all back into the bottom line for mm -hmm. companies, organizational behavior? What are some of the conclusions this is pointing to for companies? In one of our follow-up studies with Hal Gregerson at NCAD and Jeff Dyer at BYU, we're finding a, the same correlation between time abroad and entrepreneurial activity. So entrepreneurs tend to have the experiences of having um, been abroad as well. So that's a very um, a very easy way to generalize to the business world. And I think especially these days with, with companies having more of an incentive to be creative to find their way out of the financial crisis, any company that's interested in creativity should be looking for people who have these experiences or should probably not be skimping on international assignments because they seem to be important for very significant mental processes. Now there is a, uh, a certain branch of, of, of the business world in which uh, if you want to advance basically you have to move to uh, the Singapore office for two years mm -hmm. uh, in order to come back to headquarters and, and right. go up the ranks. So there's already been an adaptation within the corporate global corporate culture mm -hmm. that l having missions abroad is good for right. your career path. So your, your, your study basically just gives scientific evidence of what companies already kind of knew intuitively? That's right. So to some extent what we're finding is basically just scientifically validating what a lot of people have already suspected within the business world and within the artistic world as well. So there's kind of this idea that artists need to go abroad in order to stimulate their creative craft. So one of, the one of the findings or some of the findings that we're showing have, do have implications. So for example, the idea of adapting while abroad. So it's not just enough to spend 18 hours in the office and then go home and sleep. If you, if you want to get these kinds of um, um, tangential benefits of the, of the international experience, it'll help to get out into the culture um, and try to adapt yourself while you're on these international assignments. So it's not just enough to throw people into a foreign assignment and expect that they're going to be magically transformed, there's more to it. It's better to send people younger, it's better to get them out interacting with locals. Have you been able to uh, rebase, benchmark, or weed out any kind of cultural differences across countries or continents? In other words, mm -hmm. uh, do you find that this test works well uh, considering Americans as a population, but for example, Europeans who mm -hmm. maybe have more uh, language skills from other mm -hmm. European countries acquired at a younger age show different types of results? How do you, how do you take into account cultural mm -hmm. uh, specificities? Um, I think the best way we do it is by conducting, a stu conducting studies at INSEAD. So INSEAD has probably the most multicultural student uh, population in the world. Um, and as I alluded to earlier, one of the studies we ran was with INSEAD um, students across two different leadership classes. We had 130, uh, 133 students from 40 different nationalities. 14 people had dual nationalities and we still found the same effect of living abroad on creativity. Okay, but let me put the question to you the other way around. 
Americans have a great track record when it comes to entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. probably more so than Europeans. Uh, yet Americans are known for being isolationist and not traveling abroad. So and how only ten percent of Americans have passports. Exactly. So how do, how, how do we reconcile those two two uh, contradictory pieces of information? Absolutely. So I, I think you know living abroad is just one piece of the creativity puzzle. So these experiences undoubtedly help, they undoubtedly help the creative process, but I think what the U.S. has been good at in the last 50 or 100 years is setting up societal incentives and financial incentives for entrepreneurs. So the patent system in the United States, kind of the culture of individualism seems to be important as well. And that can make up for the creativity or lack of uh, factor that we just described. Absolutely. So, you know, living abroad is not the be-all and end-all of facilitating creativity. It's one important factor and there are you know, many other factors that can go along as well. So. William Maddox. Uh, Thank you very much indeed. Thanks very much.